Well, how's it going? I'm Mark Duffy. Welcome to my channel. On today's episode, I'm going to show you the best ways to sharpen and clean up that noise in your photographs. So one of the most frequently asked questions I get a lot is, how do I sharpen my images? How do I get such sharp images? And what do I mean by the 100 rule I use in Lightroom when I'm sharpening and cleaning up some of the noise in my images? In today's episode, I'm gonna show you the best ways I've found for sharpening and cleaning up your images. So let's not waste any more time and let's get into this. Okay, so we come into Lightroom and I have three images ready to go, as you can see in Lightroom. And these are gonna be three examples I'm gonna be using to show you how I sharpen my photos. And the reason why I picked these photos is they show the full range of ISO settings you're gonna come across uh, from the extreme of a really low ISO setting of ISO 50 to an extreme of ISO 3200 and then the one in here in the middle is the middle ground ISO 400. So you get a full spectrum of how I actually sharpen my photos. And it's pretty simple. I just use the rule of 100. So uh, without, before I explain the rule of 100, I'm just gonna open up the first image which is this one from Flagstaff, so come to develop. And you can see here, it's ISO 50. Now the ISO setting for me is very important. This is how I determine how much uh, sharpening and luminance to clean up the noise is needed per image. Now I did say before, I've said it a few times already, I used the 100 rule. I've learned this off from a photographer called Serge Ramley. I'll leave a link in the description for his channel. I won't be able to leave a link to the direct video that I got this from because I can't remember what video I watched to get this from, but the rule that he has is he determines the sharpening needed for an image depending on the ISO that's in the image. So the rule is, if it's ISO 50 like this, it's really clean. You go to a mount and you don't put up fully to 100 because that's going to be too much. So you put it to 80. And before we do that, we're just going to change this window. In this window here, if you, cross, if you press this crosshairs, you can change it to anywhere in the image. You just hover over here, you can see it moves. And I want to put it into near the center of the image. Okay, so you set it to 80. So then the difference between 100 and 80 is 20. And that is what determines your luminance. So you just simply put in 20 for your luminance. And if we zoom in here, click that on and off. You can see it's doing a reasonably good job. Now, you don't want to put in too much luminance. This isn't a great image to be shown this. I can show you in another one. If you put the luminance up fully, it's going to soften your image load. So you don't want that. You just want to bring that back to 20. And as well as that, when you're adding sharpening, if you leave the settings as is like this here, it's going to add sharpening across the whole image, which means that your sky that doesn't need to be sharpened is going to be sharpened. So what you do is you come down to masking, you hold the alt button down and you drag across. And whatever's black is being concealed and whatever's white is being revealed. Same as a layer mask in Photoshop. So whatever's white is going to be sharpened. So you don't want the clouds too much. So I usually go up as maybe as far as 75, 76, not really much more than that. And that's all I do, that's it, that's it. It's a simple, simple process. It's not too difficult. I like it. This is, I, I really do like sharpening my photos like this. And most of my photos are shot at ISO 50. So a lot of my settings are simply that, 80, 75, 20. You can nearly set that up as a preset already into your photos. And you can see here, there's not much fringing around that mountain, which is exactly what you want. You don't want much fringing, if any at all. You don't really want any at all. Uh, what I mean by fringing is like a haloing. If I go to three to one, maybe you might see it. See that little, little, little bit there, but there's not enough. There's not enough there to give out of it. Not, not that I would think anyway. So we go on to the next image then. So we go on to the uh, Giant's Causeway. And I'm using this image because Flagstaff image is photographed by a Canon 6D and the Giant's Causeway camera, obviously the 6D is in the shot. So I'm not using the 6D to photograph it. I'm using my Canon 70D. And this is what I've become quite known for on Instagram is photographing my gear setup when I'm actually at a shoot. So this is a good comparison between full frame and uh, APS-C. It doesn't really matter too much really, to be honest. Not, not when it comes to this, I don't find any. I don't really change my settings between the two. I, I apply the same settings from APS-C to full frame. So we can see here, ISO 400. So we come over to our window first of all, you can see, in this window, I'm looking at absolutely nothing. There's nothing showing me any details at all. So we need to change that. So click here and come over to say, I don't know, Canon. We're gonna go Canon or, I think we'll go set because there's a lot of details here. And we'll just we'll click there. There's a lot of details on the ridge and ever, And that's really what we look. And you can see there's some color fringings and all. 
in this image. So this is a good example. So for ISO 400, I am gonna work off the 80 rule. So 80 is at a clean image, that's ISO 100, that's ISO 50. So 400 is a bit down. So if you think about it, work in hundreds. You've got ISO 100, ISO 200, ISO 400. So for ISO 200, I normally bring it down 80 to 78. And then the next step down, because I go back, I go, I go down in step to twos, I keep it even numbers. For some reason, I keep it even numbers. That's just the way I do it. Even numbers is the way I go. So we bring that down to 76. Hit return. Now, I usually don't add in the luminance first. The next thing I, the next step I actually do is the masking. So Alt and then drag across. until it looks nice. So obviously you don't need all the details. So we just want the main details. Again, 73, 74 to up to 76 is a good way to be. And then come down to luminance. And the difference between 76 and 100 is 24. And that's it. Job's a good one. That's it, finished. You can see there, it's a bit slow to come up, but you can see it changes here. So if you watch this window for a second, you see the difference. There's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, color noise and all. And we put that back on again. It's gone, it's pretty sharp if I zoom in this here. Now, we're at three to one, so we're well above the size of the pixels from one to one ratio, we're at a three to one ratio with this. So that's before, and that's after. I'm happy enough with that, and I was happy enough with that. I used that on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and it was all fine. So we're going to the last image then, and this is the Milky Way over Kilwara Church, just outside Dundalk, and I did a great job at spelling church. I'm gonna point that out before someone else points it out to me. So, ISO 3200, the most extreme. I obviously this is shot with a 6D. I would not shoot ISO 3200 on a 70D. It's unusable, I don't care what anyone says. For me, it's unusable. This is borderline unusable. So I go back to one to one there. This is borderline unusable in my eyes as well. Um, very noisy for my taste. I'm literally only after receiving a print today for a customer of this. And when you see it printed, it's actually okay, it's fine from a distance. If I was pixel peeping while holding a frame in my face, I really wouldn't be overly happy with it, but it's okay, it's grand, it's fine. I wouldn't go above ISO 3200. So, rule of 100 again. If we did the 80, it's not enough. It's not near enough at all. So, oh, we changed the window. In the window here, maybe a bit on the building. You can see even on that window, the 6D is starting to get soft. In, for me, some people might be happy with that, but for me, it, the image is getting quite soft. Now, don't forget, I am focused in on the stars, so there, there is a little bit of play on that for depth of field. That is shot at f2.8 at 16 mil, so that's possibly another reason why it is kind of soft. So. There's no other way of thinking this. The max amount that I would go on, I wouldn't go under 70 because you're gonna be bringing in too much luminance. So I just bring this down to 70. I don't usually bring in much luminance, especially on a Milky Way because the more luminance you bring in, the less stars you're gonna see. If I zoom in here, and I'm gonna bump the luminance way up. Go full way. Just watch. You can see the stars are gone. So you don't want that. You really don't want that at all. We bring the luminance back to 30. 70 plus 30 equals 100, and change the masking. So we'll just bring this back out again, and change the masking, hold the Alt, drag across. Again, I don't want to be affecting all the stars, so I don't think 75 is going to work. As you can see, it's affecting too much here. If I just toggle this on and off, you're kind of losing. You don't really mind a bit of noise in the sky. It's the foreground, I really don't like the noise in. So you can see it's quite clean there, it's a bit soft. So we'll just bring this back, and I, I would say 60, around 59, 60, for a Milky Way shot is acceptable enough. And as you can see, there's a good bit of noise being reduced. So we'll close out the Lightroom now, and we're going to Photoshop, and I'll show you another way that you can sharpen your images without using Lightroom. So here we have the sundial photo that I did back in August. I love this. This is possibly my favorite photo I've taken this year. I'll just to show you, it's two photos. There's the original, taken at 7, 7 a.m and then I mixed in the full moon shot and that was taken at midnight, seven hours previous. If I was setting this for print, what I would do is I would add in an extra little bit of sharpening for print. This is actually what I do for print. So what I do is I get all the layers and I 
Control E to flatten them. That's going to merge them all together. Or you can come up here and you can go flatten image. And what I do is if I hold Control and J to duplicate, I'm going to use a high pass filter to add in sharpening. So you come up to filter, down to other, high pass, leave it at one. One pixel is perfect. I don't know why, but it is. It's perfect and it's perfect for APS-C as well. So this boat applies for full frame and APS-C cameras. Leave it at one. Hit OK. Come down to your blending options and select linear light. And again, this is going to be a little bit subtle, but it's good for print. I've already sharpened this, but it's good for print because you want to make sure that your print is sharp. Uh, you could use this on its own for online and it's fine as well. So we toggle it on and off. It's actually a good bit of a change, isn't it? It's pretty good. I like it. So that's what I use for print. So even though I've sharpened it in Lightroom, I do come back in and I give it a second sharpening just because I'm sending out the print. Now, here's another trick for sharpening. As you can see in this image, this is again another behind the photo. This is where the 70D made a bit of a mess of the photo. It focused here on my ball head and not on the camera. And the most important thing about product photography is the company's name needs to be in focus. So I'm going to show you how I actually use sharpening to combat a, an image that isn't fully in focus. So I'm going to regain some focus through sharpening. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to double click this, this layer to make it into a normal layer to get it away from being a background layer. Then I'm going to select Control and J to duplicate it because this is a non-destructive way of editing and you should always apply a non-destructive way of editing. And for this, this means that I always have the original, the original layers at the bottom. And whatever I do now is not going to affect that layer. So what I'm also going to do is I'm going to right click, convert to smart object. Once that's done, come up to filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. And you can already see I've used these settings a few times and it works a treat. And I would just say, just memorize these. 196, two pixels, threshold one. So you're bringing the threshold uh, just a little bit up from the bottom. And if I zoom in here, you're gonna see the difference. So uh, this is overkill, far, far overkill. This is the whole point of why you're doing it. So if we take the preview and turn it off, you can see the can it like you could use it, but for me, for my eye, it's just not perfect. And I want my shot to be perfect. I want Canon to be completely legible. So there you go. That's it done. Now, we're not fully finished there. As you can see over here where it says smart filters, this is why I left this as um, a smart object. If I didn't leave this as a smart object, this would be consolidated into that layer and I wouldn't be able to edit it. But here we go. If I select the actual layer mask, Hold down Control, press I, it will invert the mask. So now it's gone, you can see it's completely disappeared. And we'll go for B for brush. Make sure your brush is selected on white. If it's not, just hit X and it'll flip it around or you can hit this, these arrows. And I'm gonna make sure my opacity is up at 100%. Make it a little bit smaller and then just paint in the details I want to be sharp. So that, and all them, this here, that there, this there. Boom, 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 boom. All of that, get in there. So obviously I don't want everything sharp. That there is enough. I could just paint in the whole camera. That could be another option. And there you go. Turn it on, turn it off. Now I'm only affecting the camera, the main part that needs to be sharpened. It means that the, the part of the photo that was already sharp doesn't need to be any more sharp and it doesn't need to be any, in any more focus. So the viewer is not going to notice this and it's just going to look like a very, very clean image. And that's how you regain focus through over sharpening an image. So there are some of the ways that I actually sharpen my photographs. Uh, the 100 rule is what I use every time. And when I'm going to print, I'll use that high pass filter method. Uh, the other, the unsharp mask, I only use the odd time if I've missed focus. Uh, I usually have used it in the past with my behind the photo shots where my 70D hasn't quite focused exactly where I want it to be, i.e. the Canon logo of my 6D. I hope you liked that, I hope you got something from it. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell to get notified when I post up a new video. I post up every week. And check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and my site, 
my name plus photography equals.com, markduffyphotography.com. And until the next time, later Gators.